Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for coming back for yet another video. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're looking at a 21 inch Xmark commercial mower. Picked it up for hundred bucks. Does not have spark. I will put timestamps in the description, you know, chapters. If you're here specifically looking for no spark, I just want you to go right to that point. Hopefully it's what is, you know, going on with your machine. If it's not those things, it's probably just a bad coil or you might want to change the spark plug. But there's not very many things on this that could let the spark go wrong. I mean, there's only so many things, right? So thank you again for joining. Hope you enjoy. We are looking at an Xmark 21 inch commercial mower. These things are like 522 pounds. They are uh, a beast. It does not have spark, but I think I know why. Even so far as going to get the part that I think that it needs, uh, that is causing it not to have spark. So number three, like from Shrek. Uh, number three. I want to do a couple little, you know, smell the gas, do the oil, air filter, and all that stuff before I jump right in and check. I'm assuming it's going to need uh, carb clean. So I have the ultrasonic cleaner heated up, ready to go. Let's see, these uh, machines tend to get really, really beat up. And when I say beat up, I mean just destroyed. Like, on the landscape trailer, off the landscape trailer, on the landscape trailer, off the landscape, just back and forth and, and uh, mm, looks okay. It's pre-filter. Let's move on to the gas and the oil. I'm assuming the gas is probably no good. A little bit of leakage out right there, probably from humping it around. Gas doesn't smell too bad. Now let's get that oil. Oil looks just fantastic. Nice and clean, nice and clean, cool. Okay, one thing that I failed to mention, which is part of my pre-diagnosis, oh yeah, there's a uh, auction tag on it. Uh, anyways, the bail lever, it just doesn't wanna naturally go down. It's like giving me a, just a whole mess of resistance. There's a safety switch and or not a safety switch just a, a safety like ground point right here and what people do with these machines the landscape commercial dudes is that they'll they'll bypass that like they'll clip it they'll clamp it they'll do something so that way they don't have to have the the bar down they can you know because they're always moving leaves and sticks and whatever so they don't want to have to restart it up every time so they'll they'll kind of uh you know rig something up to where it doesn't uh that that piece is fully black but what happens is when you let off of that there's a little blade break that will just be on the flywheel just going 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 right and it's just wearing that just imagine like in your car, same way, flooring it and braking at the same time, right? Those brakes are clipping down versus, you know, you're, you're giving it gas. So those wheels are wanting to spin. So it's just this, uh, just this big mess. What's connected to that is that spark, right? And so when that, uh, when that naturally clamps down this, you know, ground points or whatever it's called will pull apart. And then that's what allows the spark. So I'm assuming that's just not pulling apart enough. Uh, and I'll get this taken off and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna see if this nut is loose enough or if it's not as tight to where I can. I was just holding the blade. That is not tight at all. There's one more right here. You get a bolt stuck in the socket trick you just take the take a screwdriver and you just drop it that's what that all that noise was sorry i didn't show that okay so 100 percent, i think as expected so if you see that that is that blade break <clears throat> and it's all connected so when you pull on that um, that lever up there you pull down what happens with this whole thing and i won't you know there's a lot of moving parts here Basically what this does is that lever that's hooked to there, it'll pull that back, right? You're putting tension on that cable, you're pulling that spring back, which then this arm uh, or whatever lets off of that, right? This piece is gonna let off and then that spring wants to pull that that way, that pulls the brake off. And then something right here, yeah, this is that piece where if uh, you know that's grounded or that's, yeah, that's grounded and that 
sorry, that's grounded. That's not grounded. So when you pull that bail lever back, right, pulls that all the way, and that's what allows that spark to complete, right? So I'm gonna pull down on the lever and you'll see that that probably, yeah, it doesn't even touch it, let alone pull it all the way back. So all of this is related, right? So that's the piece that I got, this little metal piece right here. I'm gonna zip tie this and then I'll check for spark. I'll put everything put back together. We'll ch ch quickly check for spark. There should be spark. Those three zip ties right there are keeping that off. So I'm gonna get everything put back together. We'll check for spark, dump a little fuel down, and we'll just kind of see how it sounds and then go from there. If I didn't mention this in the intro, I paid a hundred bucks for this. You know, it's a three or four. I, I, this, I got one last year that I'm sure I'll link somewhere at the beginning or the end of this video. Uh, I think I got that one for a hundred bucks also. Uh, exact same problem too, um, $4 part. And I ended up selling it after I cleaned it up and fixed it up and all whatever, whatever for, um, I'll say like 450 bucks. Like these things are pretty desirable, especially around this time of year. Let me get all those shroud covers put back on. Let's get this little spark checker tool on there. We'll see. See if it's got some spark. We see the orange flicker. Hopefully it just doesn't start. All right, I saw a little bit. Let me do it one more time just in case you didn't see it. Yeah. It was okay. I mean, I have seen way, way worse. That's for sure. Okay. <clears throat> well, fuel time. Hopefully it's a keeper. Okay, back up on the bench. Gas is just like spewing out everywhere. Pop that spark plug boot off. From what I remember on the last one, this uh, this spring was not as bad as I th thought it was going to be. Probably could have just used this first. All right, so out with the old. Compare notes, looks like it's good. Here's what I'm talking about with the, uh, like that brake pad material. You can see on this side, it is heavily compromised to where it's just like a ramp, whereas this one is almost a you know full brake pad. And it should, I mean, it should last a while, right? Because when you let off the brake bail, it's going to just stop the brake. So, I mean, it only wears down a little bit each time versus just leaving it on there, just perpetually spinning. So then if I remember correctly, this is just pretty straightforward. I'm going to get the ratchet. I'm going to make sure that this, uh, this piece right there at the tip, which is connected up here, is behind that piece, right? You don't want it to be looped up over that little notch. You want it to be on this side of, obviously, because when you pull that lever, it pulls that back, which then puts pressure that way, which then opens up that, that brake. Now, what we're, what we're trying to figure out, we need this cable to be putting more tension on that, so that way we can release that. You can adjust this, right? There's these two nuts right there, and you can adjust that. This bar should have some pretty decent movement. This, uh, you know, brake pusher or switch pusher, whatever this piece right here is called. You know, who knows? Maybe they installed the wrong cable. Maybe, you know, the cable is like 60 bucks and the person was like, nah, I don't want to do it. Screw it. And then ordered a different cable or a found a different who knows and then was like you know what screw it and then they ended up selling it this piece right here too this is adjusted all the way that way so i don't know if they were messing with it it can only go that way so if anything we want to adjust it that way but i mean still look at this piece it doesn't move very much okay so it's the next day uh or it's maybe two days later i got uh i got a cable um the oem Xmark people, they wanted like 30 or 35 bucks for it. And good old Stens had an aftermarket. So without further ado, I'm just gonna wind that up and uh, hopefully that fixed the issue. If it did not, I am going to be absolutely stumped. The Stens version, it was, uh, I think it was 13 bucks. So it was like half, 
It's always either come out super easily. There we go. Really hard. We get this one taken out and then we'll just compare the lengths. Okay, so I'm not really as concerned about the actual cable. Ooh. So that's about the difference. So either I ordered the wrong part or they did. I kind of have a feeling that they did because they are 0 for 1. Let's see what happens when we get put on. That already feels a lot better. This goes just like that. So let's get that guy in now. You guys will get the first exclusive look at that piece right there, pushing that uh, that bar. So hopefully, hopefully we got a winner. Uh, it's almost like it's too tight. Oh boy. Well. Okay, cool, yeah, that worked out. So remember what we did is we drove that thing in. What you didn't see up at the top where I was is that bail lever was not going all the way down to the uh, to the handle. Just for a moment, I was like, wait, what? How, how, how is that possible? But if you remember, we drove that thing out to try to compensate for that other mess. So let's get that adjusted back. And so now we have wiggle room to move that way, which is awesome. I'll probably just start by going back to where I think it was, right there maybe. Okay, sorry, so that is all the way down. Right there, I'm gonna stop. That's where we are, right? So we got about another, I don't know, two inches maybe, but that does not represent, see, I mean, I can do it all the way down. It just kind of puts a little bit of, uh, sorry, I'm using this one-handed. Uh, it just puts a little bit of pressure on it there. So let's do just a little bit more and I don't have to show this, so I'll be right back. Okay, well, while you were gone, I uh, I have some development. So I was tightening it down and uh, we, have a, we have a casualty, a broken piece. It's like this little like arm piece. But anyways, uh, I have a little like tabletop welder, which is fantastic for situations like this. So I'll, uh, you know, get that cleaned up and just do a little, little tackaroo on there. Probably unplug that, huh? <laughs> Can't really do anything else other than just like tack it like that. Probably not smart to do with the gas tank right here either. I think that's as good as we're gonna do. There's what it looks like. I can't really, you know, there's like a big blob on there. I know, I know. But uh, I can't really get the other side and that's what stinks. That is from the factory or it's supposed to be. And then that's ya boys. It's better than what it was. Obviously it was, it was broken. Here's the, here's the final product. Hopefully it doesn't snap off. Oh, great. I'm leaving the camera on this time. So here's the, gosh, gentle, very gentle, very gentle. Maybe that side first. You know, I'm going to get a wrench on that side. There, oh, much better. That's what I should have done in the first place. Let's go right there. And this is how it broke last time. So just a a little bit, just a little bit, dude. Okay, good there. Oh, much better. I mean, the bar is all the way down. If you can hear that little click right here. All right, well, let's take that carb off of there.
Yeah, that is no good. Presumed an orange color, confirmed an orange color. If you ever lapped a valve, there's like a, a valve lapping compound. It's like a it's like a goo, and it's got um, it's got like a grit in it. So that way, when you grind the valves, it you know does its thing. If you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, just go with it. But they make this uh, valve lapping compound. I actually have some right here. Um, it's like a it's like a sticky. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's like a um, not sticky actually. It's just like a goo but it's got like grit in it. So that way when you, you know, when you're lapping those valves, it, you know, kind of gives you some, uh, what am I looking for? Grit, friction, whatever, uh, grinding abilities. Everything that I touch on this carburetor, it just feels like somebody took this and just went all over it. Like if you've ever felt that valve lapping stuff, it's, it's literally identical. If I can avoid, a gasket kit that would be awesome if not you know no worries whatever I did uh, kind of clean it off a little bit I just kind of hit the outside with some <clears throat> excuse me with some carb spray just to you know Kind of limit what goes in here because if you put all that dirt in there and then it comes off and then it just whatever you can I can use this uh, liquid a couple times if if I'm clean like that I think that'll float nope the float will float and you go on this side all right 47 degrees Celsius let's do Let's do 15 minutes. I use uh, Simple Green in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. It's cheap it's at Walmart. It's you know readily available. It works pretty well. Um, I dilute it ten to one. Uh, I do use distilled water too. That's the second next level that I go. You know, just I, it's just a it's really going over the top. Just in case there's any like minerals or calcium or whatever that's in that's in the spring water. It's, it's basically the same. If you're going to buy a jug of water to pour in there, it's basically the same price, right? So why would you not if that's the case? <laughs> I got that gasket just about as good as I could get it. Again, that's the first time I've seen a plastic <clears throat> needle on a Kawasaki. I don't think this is an OEM Kawasaki carb. Um, if whoever was working on this before, you know, had the mechanical confidence or whatever you want to call it to attempt to change the cable not that it's that difficult of a of a job to some degree they must have had again some comp some kind of confidence so if they have the confidence to do that you know swapping out some cheap chinese carburetor is a very common thing that people do and you know i, I just i wouldn't put it past if somebody wanted to change the cable or thought they could change the cable and failed miserably by the way <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them to put a you know cheap junky Chinese carb in there uh, which this might be there was two yeah there's two gaskets on here there was two of these gaskets so we'll put both of them back on actually you know what one one just feels right two doesn't feel right and if it starts leaking, maybe we'll throw it on there. Okay, before we go any further, let's just get an idea of what was in that gas, that gas tank. Oh my word. The white light is kind of blowing it out. Oh, it's, it's getting normal now. Man, oh man, you just have to trust me. I mean, it's it's still pretty bad if you can see it's still the, the light is not helping it. It's actually making it look more normal. 
There's two little clips. There's one right here, which I think goes maybe like in that hole. Yeah, and then there's this one, which goes in this hole right there. There we go. So that just kind of holds that fuel line on. So let's get that clamp on there. Okay, so next day I got everything all back on. Let me get it down off the table. We'll start it up and see what it sounds like. I got it outside. Let's see uh, see if that burns off. Well, if you could hear, it was just getting starved for fuel. I don't think that it was a governor issue or anything um, <clears throat> internally. I want to take this back off, this cover back off, and just do a once over. One theory, that other spacer that I left out, could that hole be possibly, so let me, let me see if I put another spacer on, that would then drop it down. Maybe there is meant to be two spacers. Okay, I am so sorry. I, I just had to take a minute and collect my thoughts. One of those spacers or grommets or washers or whatever goes on the inside of the bowl and one goes on the outside of the bowl. And that provides enough space in there for the fuel to flow through into that little um, uh, hole in the main jet. And I didn't realize it until right now and I am so sorry. So thank you for your patience. If anybody saw that and was screaming at me, I'm so sorry. Right on top. So one, one in the bowl and then one underneath the bowl. That oil coming out the exhaust issue. I never freak out too much when that happens on something that I have never worked on. You know, a lot of times what I work on sits for years and years on end or who knows how much is sloshed up in there. All right, let me get everything put back on and then we will fire it up one more time and fingers crossed that's the winner. nice and warm. I set the camera up to change it and now I'm just realizing that the oil actually wasn't that bad. I'm just so used to changing the oil on a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna actually get like a formal uh, level reading. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's good. Good, good, good. What I can do is pop that blade off. All right, we'll pop that spark plug boot off of there. Get off. It doesn't look bad, it just looks like it's been sharpened 82,000 times.
right guys, that's gonna do it. Thank you for joining, hope you enjoyed. I paid $100 for the machine, $4 for that little brake part, $13 for the cable, so that's $117. I'm gonna list it for $450, so if there's a buyer that pays full price, uh, stand to make a profit of $333. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Appreciate all the interactions you guys have with this video and this channel. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok is a new thing that's fun. Um, say hello there, love to hear what you're working on, and until the next one, later. Later.